More than 2,500 years ago, when the world had yet to know steel, engines, cranes, or modern concrete, humans built a colossal structure made of marble, with columns weighing dozens of tons, standing nearly as tall as a six-story building on a soft, marshy terrain, and it stood firm for centuries. Can you believe it? That is the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, a structure that leaves even modern science in awe, admitting we don't fully understand them. How did the ancient Greeks transport marble blocks weighing hundreds of tons from distant quarries? How did they erect 127 massive columns, each 18 meters tall, without a single piece of machinery? And why did they choose a swampy, unstable site for such a magnificent structure? Today, we will unravel these timeless mysteries together to understand why the Temple of Artemis is not just a temple. It's a logical challenge to modern engineering. More than 2,000 years ago, on the land of Asia Minor, now Turkey, a bustling city named Ephesus rose to become one of the greatest commercial and cultural centers of the Mediterranean. It was not only a hub for busy trade ships, but also a sacred religious site, where the ancient Greeks built a structure later called a wonder, the Temple of Artemis. Artemis, in Greek mythology, is the goddess of hunting, chastity, and protector of the wild, but in Ephesus, she held an even greater significance. The people revered Artemis as the supreme mother, blessing the land, crops, and fertility. Thus, the Temple of Artemis was not merely an architectural feat, but the most important religious center of Asia Minor, attracting thousands of pilgrims and merchants each year. The ancient historian Pliny the Elder, in his work Naturalis Historia, praised the temple as an unprecedented marvel on earth, where beauty and grandeur surpassed all human creations. He emphasized that its scale and magnificence not only filled the Greeks with pride, but also became a symbol of civilized power in the eyes of other cultures. What's remarkable is that the Temple of Artemis was not a single structure built in a fleeting moment. It underwent multiple renovations and reconstructions, with its grandest version completed around the 4th century BC, featuring over 127 marble columns, each nearly 18 meters tall, intricately carved. This temple stands as a testament to the pinnacle of ancient technical and artistic knowledge. But its existence was not solely religious. It was also an economic and political lever, transforming Ephesus into a prosperous city thanks to the constant influx of pilgrims. In some archaeological texts, scholars like Mary Beard, the classical world, argue that building this wonder was not only to honor the goddess, but also a strategic move to assert Ephesus' dominance among other Greek cities. Today, looking back, what's astonishing is not just its scale, but the question, how did the ancients create a structure so far beyond the technical capabilities of their time? To grasp the extraordinary nature of the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, let's start with the numbers. According to Pliny the Elder's records in Naturalis Historia, the temple was 137 meters long, 69 meters wide, surrounded by 127 marble columns, each 18 meters tall, equivalent to a six-story building today. Each column weighed dozens of tons, perfectly erected on a soft, sinking foundation. For comparison, imagine a standard football field, about 100 meters long. The Temple of Artemis was longer than that, with a width nearly three-quarters of the field's size. It surpassed all Greek temples of its time and was even larger than some famous Gothic cathedrals in Europe, built over 1,500 years later. Take. For example, Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, completed in the 14th century. Its length is about 128 meters, nearly matching the Temple of Artemis. But Notre Dame was built with centuries of accumulated architectural knowledge, while the ancient Greeks achieved this with tools limited to pulleys, levers, and human strength. Modern engineers still wonder, how did they cut, transport, and erect these colossal marble columns without machinery? Some experts, like John Boardman in Greek architecture, admit no ancient texts describe the construction methods in detail, making the erection of columns nearly 20 meters tall one of the greatest puzzles in archaeology. Moreover, the entire structure was made of solid marble, 
a material not only heavy but extremely difficult to quarry with rudimentary iron tools. So how did the Greeks transport thousands of tons of marble from distant quarries to Ephesus? And why, with such limited technology, did they choose a design so ambitious beyond ordinary religious needs? The Temple of Artemis doesn't just amaze with its size, but with the biggest question. How did the ancient Greeks transport and erect 127 massive marble columns, each nearly 18 meters tall and weighing dozens of tons? According to modern geological surveys, the marble used for the temple was quarried from sites over 10 kilometers from Ephesus, with some blocks coming from mountains dozens of kilometers away. And remember, this was the 6th century BC, no engines, no trucks, no steel cranes. So how did they do it? Hypothesis 1 transport by rafts and water. One widely supported hypothesis is that they used logs as rollers to drag stones to riverbanks, then placed them on giant rafts to transport via waterways. Archaeologist John Boardman, in Greek architecture, suggests that leveraging seasonal floodwaters and rudimentary canal systems could have reduced the weight burden. But he admits, keeping stones weighing dozens of tons stable on rafts was a nearly impossible challenge. Hypothesis 2. Axle and Rolling Technique Another hypothesis, mentioned by Pliny the Elder in Naturalis Historia, describes an ingenious method, turning the stone blocks into giant wheels by attaching wooden axles to both ends, then rolling them along roads using human and animal power. Yet, even with this method, transporting across marshy, weak terrain without sinking was beyond the era's capabilities. Hypothesis 3. Lost ancient technology. Some modern researchers pose a bold question. Could there be ancient techniques we haven't discovered? Even with pulleys and human labor, erecting 127 columns nearly 20 meters tall with perfect precision is a feat not to be underestimated. Engineer D. Jackson, in a study on the Ephesus Temple, University of Cambridge, remarks, even with modern machinery, this would require exceptional skill. The ancients' achievements suggest they possessed a more advanced technical system than we realize. Imagine the scene back then, hundreds of Greek workers, shouting in unison, pulling massive ropes to raise a column. Sunlight glimmers on the bright white marble, and the creaking of pulleys echoes through the air. Each successful column erection was a triumph, not just of strength, but of intellect far ahead of its time. Yet, an even greater mystery remains. How did they build the temple on marshy ground and keep it standing for centuries? The secret lies in the foundation, a feat that will convince you the ancient Greeks were not only master architects, but understood soil mechanics at a level that astonishes modern engineers. One of the reasons the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus remains a puzzle for modern engineers is the ground it was built on. Ancient Ephesus was near the sea, with soft, waterlogged soil during the rainy season. The worst conditions for a structure weighing tens of thousands of tons in marble. Yet, this wonder stood firm for centuries before being destroyed by earthquakes and looting. The question is, how did the ancient Greeks do it? According to archaeological records from D.G. Hogarth's excavations at Ephesus, British Museum, 1908, when excavating the temple's ruins, archaeologists found beneath the foundation not just clay, but a strange layer of materials, charcoal, ash and animal fur. Why use this combination? Modern geologists explain, charcoal absorbs moisture and maintains stability, while fur and ash help distribute pressure and prevent water from seeping into the stone foundation. This was essentially a primitive form of soil isolation used in modern engineering. But how did they know this principle over 2,500 years ago? Moreover, according to Pliny the Elder in Naturalis Historia, Choosing a marshy foundation was not a mistake, but a strategic calculation. He wrote, The builders believed soft ground would better absorb earthquake forces than hard rock. This suggests the Greeks understood soil pressure and seismic principles, a concept only studied systematically in the 20th century. Even today, engineers examining the ruins admit, without an anti-sinking solution, a 137-meter-long structure with 127 columns weighing dozens of tons would collapse within years. Yet, the Temple of Artemis stood for over 600 years before succumbing to natural disasters and human destruction. 
not due to a weak foundation, but the combined forces of nature and man. This leads to a thought-provoking conclusion. Was this a stroke of genius coincidence? Or did the ancient Greeks possess a technical knowledge we haven't fully uncovered? But the foundation is only the hidden part of the iceberg. Above it, the Temple of Artemis shone with a beauty Pliny called an unparalleled masterpiece. Intricate carvings that still leave modern artisans in awe. How did they achieve this with rudimentary tools? If the foundation hid the technical genius of the ancient Greeks, the visible architecture of the Temple of Artemis was a proclamation of timeless beauty. The temple was not just massive, it was likened to a colossal marble gem, where every carved detail reached a level of refinement that even modern artisans admire. According to Pliny the Elder in Naturalis Historia, the temple's columns were not only towering but adorned with intricate carvings depicting Greek mythology and daily life. On the torus and basis, one could see patterns of acanthus leaves, lotuses, interspersed with hunting scenes and images of the majestic Artemis. Astonishingly, all were crafted with rudimentary iron tools, yet the precision of the carvings was near machine-like. A study by Mary Beard, The Parthenon and Its Legacy, emphasizes the ancient Greek artisans didn't just create a temple, they crafted a colossal work of art that even Renaissance sculptors would struggle to replicate fully. The question is, how did they create smooth, evenly deep lines on marble, a material notoriously hard and difficult to carve, without industrial grinders? Experts believe they used abrasive powders mixed with quartz, sand, and iron tools, but this required near-infinite time and patience. Did these artisans dedicate their entire lives to perfecting just a small part of the structure? Remarkably, on some wall fragments and statues found at the ruins, archaeologists discovered traces of blue and red paint, proof that the temple was once vibrant with color, not the stark white we imagine today. This shows they not only mastered engineering, but also possessed color-blending techniques durable for millennia, a knowledge still mysterious today. Some modern hypotheses suggest the Greeks may have used simple mechanical tools to aid carving, perhaps primitive versions of lathes or turntables, though no complete evidence has been found. Researcher Joseph V. Noble, in a study on Greek art, noted, the technical precision and uniformity of details make one suspect they knew of tools history hasn't recorded. But the artistry is only part of the story. What puzzles scholars most is not the refinement, but the question. Why build such a masterpiece in such an unfavorable location? A low, marshy area prone to flooding and subsidence. Why not choose higher ground? If you were an ancient architect, where would you place a grand structure? On firm, dry, safe ground? Yet, the ancient Greeks chose the opposite. The Temple of Artemis was built on low, marshy land prone to flooding and earthquakes. A seemingly illogical decision, but one hiding layers of meaning that researchers still debate today. According to archaeologist D.G. Hogarth in Excavations at Ephesus, 1908, one key reason was the site's proximity to a bustling port and trade routes, making Ephesus a hub for pilgrims and commerce. Placing the temple at this trade gateway turned Artemis into not just a goddess of hunting, but a symbol of economic prosperity. Still, the question remains, why not choose higher ground? It was flood-prone and difficult to build on. Some scholars suggest that, in ancient Greek spirituality, water symbolized purification and life. Building the temple near water held a sacred significance, connecting the divine with nature, creating a holy space where people felt the goddess's presence. Pliny the Elder, in Naturalis Historia, revealed a key detail. The builders believed soft ground would lessen earthquake shocks. This sounds speculative, but modern science confirms it's partly true. Marshy soil absorbs seismic vibrations better than hard rock, reducing direct impact on structures. Perhaps, through experience or tradition, the Greeks intuitively applied a rudimentary seismic solution, something we only studied systematically in the 20th century. Beyond practical reasons, some hypotheses suggest a deeper mystery. The Temple of Artemis may have been built on a sacred energy point or astronomical axis. Some archaeologists, like Anthony Spaforth in the complete Greek temples, note the temple's main axis aligns with lunar cycles, fitting for Artemis, the goddess linked to the moon in Greek mythology. If true, 
This choice was not a technical error, but a sophisticated ritual calculation, blending religion and astronomy. Yet, these are still hypotheses. No ancient texts explain it clearly, and each answer raises more questions. Did the Greeks calculate everything, or was it an eerie coincidence? We've begun to understand the ancients' logic, but the mystery doesn't end here. Some details defy explanation, from strange symbols on the columns, tales of mystical rituals, to odd artifacts found around the site. The Temple of Artemis was not just an architectural marvel. To the ancient Greeks, it was a sacred sanctuary where the human and divine worlds intertwined. But when modern archaeology began excavating its ruins, they uncovered traces and details that raised questions. Was the temple solely for religious worship or a center for enigmatic rituals beyond ordinary understanding? During excavations, experts found symbols and patterns unrelated to typical Greek mythology. Some were complex geometric shapes, spirals, or astronomical motifs. Researcher Anthony Spaforth, in The Complete Greek Temples, notes that many symbols may indicate a coded ritual system or astronomical calculations. The question arises, were the ancient Greeks only worshipping Artemis, or were they performing mysterious rituals tied to natural forces and cosmic cycles? A bold hypothesis suggests the temple's location wasn't just based on faith but connected to ley lines, mystical energy lines linking ancient structures worldwide. Some researchers compared the temple's coordinates with other major temples and found an eerily precise alignment, hinting that the ancients may have understood astronomical and geomagnetic principles beyond their era's science. Records from Strabo and Pausanias mention lavish Artemis festivals, but some describe animal sacrifices, a common practice then. However, scattered ancient texts hint at secretive initiation rituals reserved for the elite conducted in the darkness of auxiliary shrines. No one knows exactly what these rituals entailed, a fertile ground for theories about a hidden religious secret kept for millennia. Unanswered questions. Why was the Temple of Artemis so unreasonably large for religious needs? Was its entire design, from axis to patterns, calculated based on astronomical cycles? And most thought-provoking, was its grandeur only to honor the goddess? or did it serve a purpose history deliberately concealed? These questions have never found satisfying answers. They pull us toward an uncomfortable truth. Ancient civilizations were not as primitive as we assume. They may have known things modern science is still seeking. The Temple of Artemis is long gone, leaving only scattered ruins in Ephesus, but its mysteries still confound scholars. With rudimentary tools, the ancient Greeks built a colossal wonder 137 meters long, 69 meters wide, with 127 marble columns 18 meters tall on marshy ground, and made it stand for centuries. Modern engineers admit, we couldn't replicate this structure with the tools of that era. From transporting thousands of tons of marble, erecting massive columns with near-perfect precision, to an anti-sinking foundation ahead of its time all remain open questions. But it's not just the engineering. The true meaning of the temple remains elusive. Why did the Greeks choose a hazardous site? Was it for religious faith or for reasons tied to astronomy and sacred coordinates? We don't yet understand. The strange symbols, theories of secret rituals, even ideas of a lost knowledge, all make the Temple of Artemis not just a wonder, but a riddle challenging modern science. And perhaps, this is the message history leaves us. Never underestimate the wisdom of ancient civilizations. The more we excavate, the more we realize an unsettling truth. We may not be as advanced as we think. Thank you for joining me in exploring the mystery of the Temple of Artemis, a wonder both beautiful and daunting, as it raises more questions than answers. If you found this video fascinating, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts. What techniques do you think the Greeks used to build this structure? Or did they possess knowledge we've lost? Get ready for the next episode, as we continue our journey to unravel ancient structures that defy logic, where every stone is a question and every mystery is a challenge to humanity.